When the massive body of warm water that triggers an El Nino moves east across the Pacific, the impacts are felt around the globe. Before we knew about El Nino, there was no reason to expect that uh, thunderstorms in one part of the world might be related to drought in another part. Scientists at NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, are playing a vital role in our quest for a global understanding of El Nino. On the northwest coast of South America, Peru suffers a dramatic increase in rainfall, leading to widespread flooding. I decided to get my kids out of there and take them to my sister-in-law, and it was full of water. I felt so sorry for my children. But while Peru is being flooded, the drought-stricken interior of Australia is burning. They're having forest fires in eastern Australia, which are record-breaking. And this is probably directly attributable to El Nino. And it's not just Australia. There was a smog cloud half the size of the continental US over Indonesia because of the uncontrolled wildfires that were burning there for months during the 97-98 El Nino. During a strong El Nino, famine hits India when the monsoons fail to arrive. And in Africa, intense rains bring flood and disease. El Nino doesn't directly cause disease outbreaks. It creates the conditions by which those diseases can flourish and spread. One positive effect of El Nino is the international cooperation that is helping scientists predict its global impacts. But the oceans of the Earth and the atmosphere know no national boundaries. You can draw lines on a map, but that isn't going to stop air currents and ocean currents from working their magic. For the Weather Channel, I'm Nick Walker.